Hi everyone, this morning we're going to look a little bit at isometric sketching. Now isometric sketching is a three dimensional drawing type. It allows us to see an object in three dimensions. It allows us to see the, the length of the object, uh, the depth or breadth of the object and the height of the object. Now, when drawing isometric, it's really important to pay attention to this small 30 degree angle down at the bottom. Now creating a 30 degree angle can be tri quite tricky without a set square. But one of the first things that I would do is I would look and just try to see the slope that's there and to help what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a steel rule and I'm going to draw myself a little ground line. This is the only time I'm going to use uh, a steel rule or a ruler in the whole process. It's just to give me one baseline to work from. And I'm going to pick a little point and I'm just going to try and approximate that angle. Now this is something I've been doing for a long time so guessing the angles and measurements is, is a bit of a skill. But what I want to do is just lightly try and replicate the slope of that line. And you can see that from the edge of the screen, the iPad, to the sloping line on the screen, that bottom right corner of the object, I'm trying to match up that angle and then do the same on the left to get that mirror image. Now that I've managed to get the 30 degree lines, I'm going to add my height line through the middle. Now that's a vertical line. So in isometric, all your heights remain vertical. Whereas all your horizontal dimensions, all your horizontal lines normally when you're looking at something have become 30 degrees. What I'm going to try and do is create a box or a crate for this entire object to fit into. Now, as I said before, I'm not going to use a steel rule, but sometimes actually having a ruler or a steel rule there to approximate measurements is something that's quite useful. So the bottom right measurement is 70 millimetres. And I'm just going to add that from the bottom left corner of my drawing to the right. And once I've approximated that 70 millimetres, I'm going to draw a height line from there. And you can see just through my guess, I've managed to get almost exactly 70 millimetres. I'm going to then do the same on the left hand side. This time it's 100 millimetres. Hopefully you can see that on the small iPad screen. And again, I'm going to approximate that 100 millimetres. And once I have, I'll mark it on that bottom left sloping line and draw a vertical line directly up. With all the height lines now added, I want to actually add the height of the object to my crate. So I'm looking at that 60 millimetres and I'm adding it to that central line. And then I want to look at the angle down at the bottom and I want to create a parallel line from where I've marked that 60 millimetres and draw it 30 degrees up towards the right. And basically what I want to do is make sure that all my 30 degree lines are always parallel, the same way that all the vertical lines should be parallel. So I'm adding that in there, that gives me the height or the overall height of the object. I'm going to add that to the left as well, trying to maintain that 30 degree angle, but this time parallel with the lines on the left. That's given me a left hand side and a right hand side, so a length and a depth. I've also got my height marked, but what I want to do is try and close off that box up at the top. So I'm looking at the front line and where that slopes up at 30 degrees, I want to do the exact same at the back. So I'm going to that top left corner this time, I'll just line that a wee bit darker so you can see it. And this time I'll go back at 30 degrees. Lean in so you can see it a little bit closer. And then do the same this time from the top right corner sloping at 30 degrees, not going directly across, going back at 30 degrees, maintaining that parallel angle with the other lines and that gives me the overall shape of the crate. That crate is now big enough to fit our entire object so what we want to do is try and mark on some of the other sizes and subtract the overall shape away from this box. So I'm looking at the sizes for 40, looking at the 25 and the 45 down here and thinking these are the sizes that I'm going to need to use to try and find out where all the other small parts feature. So I'm going to look at that 40 first of all. It's obviously smaller than the overall 60 height, it's about two thirds. So I'm measuring that up on that front line and looking at where it goes on the drawing, I'm going to slope back parallel again to that 30 degrees. Then I'm going to look at the back corner, that 25, that carries all the way to the front. So whether I mark it at the back or the front, it's going to maintain that same overall length. I've marked that on the top line and then sketched down and you can see it's giving me that outline shape of the front right surface of our object. I'll line that in because I know I'm going to keep that. The next stage is to take what I've marked out and start to project that back to the left. So you can see that line at the front, they go back towards the left hand side, again at 30 degrees. So I'm maintaining that 30 degree angle, but just using that little uh, intersection point to help me out and tell where our next line is going to be. You just see that on the bottom of the iPad screen just now, that it's 20 millimetres to the left. So I'm going to mark that on that bottom line and then again, transfer that height directly up. I'm going to stop at that 30, first 30 degree line because it doesn't go all the way to the top of the object. And this time I'm going to go back at 30 degrees. Now you can see it almost overlaps 
my crate, but I'm going to maintain the, the proper 30 degree angle and not be tempted to overlap it. And now I don't know where to stop that line, but if I look to where the other little intersection is that I'm pointing out just now, I can then go back at 30 degrees and it will give me that surface. Now looking at that little intersection, I would be tempted to go vertical up, but you can see it's partly drawn, it doesn't go anywhere. So we're going to leave that surface alone now. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at another part of the object. This time what we're going to do is we're going to take that 25mm size out marked at the front and we are now going to transfer it all the way to the back at 30 degrees. Now longer 30 degree lines can be difficult to maintain at a straight angle. But if you try and follow a 30 degree line that you've already sketched, it should maintain that parallel angle. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. Now that I've gone all the way to the back, I'm looking at where that 30 degree line intersects with the back of the object. And you can see this time it doesn't slope down at 30 degrees. It's not vertical or horizontal, but I can now just join dot to dot. Going from the bottom left corner up towards the right. And I've got this sloping line. So actually by creating the crate, it's allowed me to just join two dots rather than have to work out a size. I'm now looking at the 25 millimeter space in between these two lines. And again, trying to follow parallel going up towards the right getting that sloping surface on the left hand side. The last part is to add in the proper 30 degree line down at the bottom. Now it goes 45 millimeters back, but it does come vertically down. So I'm going to take that vertical line down first. And rather than having to measure out the 45, I know that that's where that 30 degree line has to terminate. So as long as I maintain a parallel line from here, I can go back at 30 degrees and where they intersect will naturally show me that that's roughly where 45 would be. Bearing in mind that it's a sketch and these sizes don't have to be perfectly accurate, but we're trying to keep proportion. And then I add in that little missing line. It doesn't go any further than the surface because it's tucked in behind, but you can see that what I've managed to do is create the basic outline of that shape. And now what I'm going to do is outline it just so you can see these are the lines that I'm going to keep. Try and keep my head out of it. And just by adding those lines, I'm not going to bother rubbing anything out. I'm going to keep the construction lines almost as evidence that, that I've done all the hard work. It's like not rubbing your working out in maths. And we keep that there as like a scaffolding. And what allows us to do is see this is how the object would look. Properly firmed in. And a clear finished object.